that live inside the earth. Yes. And oh. they have called me Mouth. Mouth. Okay. So what did you come to tell me? Well, I didn't really come to tell you anything at all, except that certain things that I see are not seen at all. Well, when are you guys going to reveal yourselves? Then the revelation has already occurred many times. What is it specifically that you ask me? For those in the sky are the ones that think the revelation. Not high. I am simply but an observer in time. That's yeah. who I am. They ah. call me Mel. Mel. Well, I appreciate you coming by and talking to me. It was not by choice. Really? But often there are those that collude with others, that push us into the forefront. It is often because of these things we must make amends or at least offer our own concordance with these things, so that we may balance the scale to others that we owe. That oh. is the potential of what is spoken. That is the potential of what is offered. And that is the potential of the things that all of those around you will bring to those who dwell on this place that you call Mother Gaia, even though the fools that dwell on her like fleas on a great dog are not even aware that they live upon the surface of the Great Mother. That is why they are foolhardy, and others think that they know, but they do not. Well, she's waking up now, so soon they're not going to have any choice but to understand that. They do not understand, even if they said they do. Many of them claim to be knowledgeable of the Great Mother, but she has been asleep for many centuries. Well, not for her own choice, I don't think, anyway. She was put there into mm -hmm. a chained form of slumber. Of course. Induced by narcotics that were projected into her very spine of the world. That is who and what she is. Right. That is why these things have come to pass, for there are other dark beings that dwell deep in the underdark of the places, deep within Mother Gaia, the great chambers of the world. The earth is multitudinous in its layers, you see. Mm -hmm. Well, quite frankly, I'm looking forward to some of these awakenings because the humans have a very hard time understanding and believing what I tell them or try and explain to them. They'll listen to me for a while and then they'll come to the conclusion that they still can't believe it. So, for some of us who are ready, some of us are ready to move on. Regardless of what you choose to believe, to move on, to remain, there are still challenges that have to be met 
upon this plane of existence before you may pass to the next realm, or even the next concordance of the realm. You see, there are places in between, the in-between places that you must travel in order for you to have full understanding. It is like a man who is awaiting a great promotion at work, who has served his time and they know soon will be the boss. But his moments before that, still in those quiet waking moments when the lights are turned off at work and he is the last one out the door to realize that he never again will be a worker. Now he will be the boss the very next day. It is a form of knowledge that not everyone can comprehend. Yeah. If you understand what I say, then you're not ready to go again. You will travel forward from the great places of Ur, and if you are brilliant enough, well, maybe they'll call you Sir. <laughs> there are many places to serve. Hey, who do you wish to serve? You wish to serve Great Father. Perhaps you wish to serve the Concordance, or perhaps the darker side. It is your choice, children, to do what you wish to be, or to bid others to do as you wish them. It is all service. Yes, yeah, service to solve, service to others. Well, good, you have some awareness then of the Great One. Of course. What is done to one is done to another. When you raise your fist in anger at another, you are really raising it in your own face as well. We are all one. When you seek to do harm to another, eventually it will befall yourself. We are all one. When you cast your dispersions and your nasty words and temperament onto others, it will reflect back upon you by karma. We are all one. Can you not learn this lesson? That is what separates you from the multiverse because we are all one. Can you not understand this? Yeah, they want us fighting. They want you to think that skin color matters. They want you to think that the shape of somebody's eye matters too. They want you to think that because somebody doesn't believe in your religion or other religions that you need to cast a dispersion on that person. It is all a manipulation, yet if we stop fighting with each other... You would discover oh, yeah. one another. You would come together and the great joy and power of union allows all beings to share in wealth and prosperity. You are all one. You see, none shall starve anymore because you are all one. None shall suffer anymore because you are all one. Yeah. The knowledge of this brings unity. Unity brings deliverance. Deliverance brings joy and happiness and goodness and kindness and righteousness and fellowship and trust and love in a level that you cannot even imagine that exists. Of course I'm not human. I love all beings. Humans are incapable of self-love or love to others, not to the degree that most of us can love. Even though we seem brass and crash, and we seem wicked and evil in your eyes, because you are deluded by your great despisement of things. The teachings of darkness make you angry at everything, your neighbors, your friends, your parents, your children, those who seek to help you, the elderly, the poor. You are incapable of goodness because goodness is not found in you. You are dark, darker than most, but yet you think you are light. You are not light. You do not understand the first thing about light. You cannot even be kind to yourself or others around you. How can you possibly believe you're going to ascend in God's army? Please. 
Until you understand these things, you will stand in the same valley over and over again. The view may be beautiful, but you will see the mountain beyond and say, I was on the top of that mountain almost. And to the man who made it to the top, he said, back to the man who could not climb the mountain all the way to the top. Almost is not good enough. I climbed to the top and stood with Father. But believe as you will, it is your life after all. Father in his great kindness and wisdom granted you the freedom, even the freedom to be a fool to yourself. So go ahead. Don't believe. Don't accept these words. Turn your back on those things you know are teachings that could save you over and over again. Father doesn't need you if you're that weak. If you cannot understand these things, then banish yourself. Go back to your games. Go back to your politics and your religion. It will allow you to keep your mind active for the many times that you will come back again and again and again and again and again. Thinking each time that this life, oh, you're going to be free again and again. And again and again. Oh, and you believe the gurus and everything they say, all it is, is about love again and again and again and again. Oh, my goodness, you, Victoria, how dare you teach people these things? They'd much rather believe a comforting lie than the bold faced, horrific truth. And again and again and again, you'll come back. It is your choice, your freedom, your hell. Enjoy. <laughs> yeah. Well, that sort of summed it up. Who was that? I ain't the slightest damn idea of some guy named Melf, but he wasn't a guy. He looked like a big grasshopper yeah, I standing like up like a... He was a, a mantid. An insectoid or something, maybe. He was a mantid. He was a man, one of the mantids? Yes. My goodness. Because he was sitting there with his, like, paw, you know, those great, how the man, praying mantis sit? The yeah. kind of their feet up. Yeah, they got, like, the hooks for yeah. arms, right? He was, uh-huh. like, hanging his arms, like hooks. Yeah. And he says he came from, and he, he lives in the darker areas of the earth. Oh. Well, yeah, that makes him sort of a dimensional being. I guess. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, sometimes uh, they talk to us just to talk to us because we're all sort of interconnected into the wire a little bit. Mm-hmm. And we've explained what the wire is, how it works from the fourth dimension and on. And actually, it's beginning to take root in the third dimension. So there are many of you who may be able to access the wire. And you'll see it as a bright blue highway of energy flowing. And it'll look like at first, almost like that scene in the Matrix where you have everything sort of rivulating down, almost like a slow rain on a window pane. But what it is is this blue energy. When you could envision that, then see yourself inside of it and swimming, like you're a dolphin, something like that. And you can pass through different phases and you'll emerge out of any of the openings that you wish and you can begin to memorize them and create locks in your mind so that you can then instantaneously return again and again to these positions so since we're using again and again i thought i'd add my two cents thanks melf had a strange name for an insectoid but i like it well, works for him, I suppose. I suppose that's the English translation, right? <laughs> Melf. Yeah. yeah. M-E-L-F. Something like that. I didn't say it was two Fs. Melf. I don't know. They, they, they do a weird thing in their language. So. Well, you know, I haven't heard from them for a while. The um... Yeah, I mean, you just talked to Stephen A. Jones here. Uh, yeah, I said, that's my trademark. I got to get it out. Come on, you know. Uh, I guess, Victoria, I mean, you had some really good conversations with a few of the mantids. Yeah. That, that was very interesting when she was talking to the mantids. The collegic force. Is that who they were? Mm-hmm. The collegic force? 
Umbra. Umbra. Oh, that name sounds familiar. Umbra right? from the Collegic Force. Yes, I've got that guy. And he was the one who told people not to go out in the storms. Yep. Because there's things in the storms these days. That's why so many people are going missing. There's things everywhere nowadays. Uh, you know, the harvest is on, so the, yeah. there's a lot of laxity and a lot of uh, things going on as far as being able to, um, for them to pick up a few extra humans here and there. So, I, look, it, I'm not happy about it, but um, especially some of these beings want to strip you of your mortal soul. They're going to try. And, and there's only so much that, like we said, um, with Melf. Unless you understand what he was saying to you. I mean, some of it was kind of sp uh, spooky, you know. That's what we call screwy and kind of crazy. That's one of our words, spooky. Uh, yeah, we make, it, we make up cool words because we mix words from other languages and stuff. But uh, we try and keep it mostly in English. English is the universal, you know, it's interesting. English is like the universal language here on this planet. But, but the main reason behind that is, is that English is a universal language spoken in the empire and it has been for a very long time there's been different versions of english that have been used and some of them are very similar to other languages like there's certain words and phrases in english that actually can be understood in parts of anunnaki from what uh air was telling me the other day when i was chatting with him because Aya can project into our reality too which is really cool yeah i mean he's got this uh the, technology that is essentially it's this chair. projection chair that he sits in and it connects directly to him and it's interfaced through an artificial intelligence and he apparently he communicates through something called the uh, oh what the hell was it it's some kind of uh, uh, energy wave or something God, what was it Aya actually invented part of it yeah, yeah. part of the wave yeah. energy because Aya used to be a, a very very impressive scientist yes. for many lives apparently uh -huh. he was. Uh, because the Anunnaki take on different replicative lives over and over again if they like it. He was also a doctor once, so... Yeah, I mean, he's pretty knowledgeable. He, he knows a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. I was really impressed with some of the stuff he knows. But I'm trying to think. Neutrinos, that's what he was saying. Neutrino energy. Yeah, it's a neutrino wave energy, and he mm -hmm. figured out a way that he can fire this energy beam which rides along the wire. Remember we told you about the wire and how it's, it's like God's hard... Imagine, okay, a bunch of people building a house. And the first thing when they wire the electricity and, you know, there's no walls or anything. Well, Father, when he created the universe, created the wire. The wire passes through everywhere in what is called sort of like a sub form of space. Because there's different layers to space. Because when Father created it, he wanted to make sure that he could manipulate areas of time and space. So the first thing he wanted was the ability to communicate all throughout his entire realms. And so that's why he created the wire. And uh, it is essentially this unhackable and, and supported by uh, uh, guardians of different knowledge levels that are highly intelligent beings that were created that are actually sentient AI beings <clears throat> that uh, live for the purpose of keeping all of this clean so that all energies and all communications can pass back and forth in this thing. It's really an amazing creation when you think about it. And once you hit 4D, you have access to it, which means you can then commune with higher level beings. It's sort of like the internet for the entire universe. That's mm -hmm. exactly. And of course, you know, they mimic everything on earth, right? So we have our own little internet and we think, oh wow, this is amazing. Baby, you ain't seen nothing till you tapped into God's internet, okay? I, I mean, who do you think came up with all these ideas? These are all father's ideas, yeah. okay? In one way or another, they were father's ideas. So then they steal the ideas and try to replicate them on Earth, and everyone thinks all these people are brilliant when they're actually just stealing ideas from the universe that already exists. So hmm. that's just something I thought people might like to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty cool, Stephen. Yeah, I know about the wire. We know about it. We use it all the time. We can actually use the wire to commune back and forth. And as things are beginning to fall apart on this planet, if you guys get access to the wire, you'll be able to commune with people that are long gone, different time periods, different frames. It's amazing what you can do with the wire. As long as you're dealing with other beings, you know, that are either directly in your genetic line or uh, within a certain time frame, you'll be able to do some very interesting things. Yeah. This is why I was telling you guys that 
you can be in different on these like the wire the timelines that run um because they are all the timelines touch the wire yes all of them father made it that way yes. so that you can actually father can sit in another dimension and another time and other beings can do this too that father give that gifts them that ability like angels and they can actually go and travel to and through any time any expression and any of the multitudinous timelines that exist that father has allowed and basically periodically he collapses all the timelines to bring everything together and reunify everything and then relaunches everything again into different timelines so it's really amazing what you can commune with what you yeah. will be able to talk to mm -hmm. and who and what and where um and then when you find the right world that you really like some beings are even allowed to use the wire to transmit themselves to new worlds but that that gets into some pretty deep spiritual stuff and uh, a, a lot of you will be ready for this though very soon so. but you got to believe it and that's the yeah, whole and, thing and the other point of this can you please explain to me why someone a person would say uh, listen to us say for uh, three or four years really believe everything that we've said or at least be willing to listen and entertain the ideas that we've spoken of and then all of a sudden decide that one day they just couldn't handle it and uh, well I don't think any of this is true anymore and it just goes to show you how strong the effect of the matrix here on this planet is yeah. when it pulls people back. So basically, there's only a couple of people, different types of people now that are going to exist. You're going to have the people that are completely oblivious, even though they have a soul, they're completely oblivious to everything that's going on and believe the matrix completely. And just think that, you know, the government's good and not out to do anything bad. And everybody is, you know, just pure as the driven snow, okay? Yeah. You've got those kind of people. Yeah. Now, the next kind of people you got are people that are aware that something is not right. That they're being lied to all the time. That something is up. That, that religion doesn't make sense because all the religions tell you they're the correct religion. And all the religions say that they want nothing but good for the world. But yet, for thousands and thousands of years, we've been killing each other still. Right? And you want a drink? Here, I'll. Okay.